Uh, welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Today's guest, uh, actually a recommendation from a previous guest, Malte Hasselgren. Uh, his previous coach, uh, Leonardo Åsen, uh, from Tronos, Sverige. Sverige. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to be here. This episode is brought to you by Scandlux, your home for Scandinavian luxury products for the U.S. market. You can find us at scanlux.com. Yeah, so uh, we were talking a little bit. You are now the the head coach of uh, the J20 region team in Huddinge outside of Stockholm. Yes, that's that's correct. But on your when we were recording this on Zoom, you still have your follow EF uh, picture on there, so it's good. We're gonna we're gonna it's good. You shouldn't change it. No, I mean, I mean, I had I, I had a so great time in, in Fallen, so I had to appreciate it a, a little bit. So why not to to keep the picture on the on the email to yeah. to well, to show and, me? And we're going to dive into your background, and then I, I, kind of the a couple of the main topics that I want to talk about is you know we've had a lot of guests on from um, from Stockholm. And yeah. and a few, but but I like to be able to talk about the differences in the region, especially from a head coaching spot at J20 region, and the difference between smaller club clubs, medium clubs, and I think that you guys are kind of a medium to large club, but yeah, has its certain role in the almost like a a, a farm team to the big yeah. clubs like Uruguay and Oiko and yeah. But, in J20 region, which we've talked about with the previous guest, Franz de Groot, uh, that came through in Huddinge that I know you coached as well, about the hockey factory of Huddinge and why that is kind of known for that. But yeah, but um, but let's talk about uh my fa- one of my favorite guests so far, Malta Hasselgen, who you coached in two two places. Yes. Yes, that's correct. I I coached him in uh, in Fallon, and uh, then I had uh, the privilege to coach him like two months in uh, Huddinge before he lived uh, to uh, to uh, Nal. Yeah, um, yeah. Because he was saying that yeah, my, you know, he was waiting for his uh, visa, I think, to to come through, and and then you, I have to ask you. You kind of knew what you were getting, right? And you were like, "If you have, if I have a chance to get two months out of him, I'd rather have him on my roster, right?" Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, Malte is. Uh, I have, I have always uh, loved him as a hockey player. You know, he's, he's, uh, he has, he's a very skilled. Uh, and after a couple of years, I can say he's get you know developed the, the hard work too. Uh, but but I think he's uh, he's a good uh, goal scorer. He, he he always want to learn, be better. And um, I mean, I just love to to coach that uh, that kind of player. And, and Malte is yes, of, of course, one of the best and the most fun player I have been coaching for my thirteen years as a hockey coach. Yeah. All right. So let's go back a little bit. So you told me off off line here you're from tronos originally but but you have right. a background that yes. you're originally your ancestry is from colombia not maybe, yes so i know you told me you were adopted but how does it work like so um i'm a dual citizen so yeah. one, of, one of the advantages of being u.s and american and my son who plays in sweden has a dual citizenship which is incredibly advantageous in yeah. sports because you can yeah. uh you know he is the only so in j18 last year he was the only american in all of sweden j18 at the time there's only like three americans in j20 so yeah. few americans are over there how does it work for you do you have did you <laughs> were, did do you have a dual citizenship yeah actually i i have so i i was I was born in uh, Colombia in Bogota. So when I was like two years old, my 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 parents, Shell uh, uh, and Ursula, adopted me, and uh, and bring me to Toronto, where I ha- I have been grown up. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Colombia, Colombia, yeah. But I, I had never felt like a Colombian. Uh, <laughs> many 
Latino people who 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 ask me like, where are you from? Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm from Colombia. Oh, Latino. So how do you feel to be Latino? I mean, I I always say sorry, but I don't feel like a Latino. I just feel like to be. I mean, I mean, I'm just a Swedish guy. Yeah, I feel like a Swedish guy. <laughs> And, and not, it's not 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 blue blue eye and uh, blonde, blonde Swedish guy, but yeah, but uh, a little bit more darker Swedish guy, but I uh, yeah, yeah, and but I I gotta ima- imagine you know when I've heard like Mika Sabanajad and and Slatan Ibrahimovic and and that has you know an ancestry that is not blue eyed blonde Swede, yeah. right? Yeah, that it's it's a uniqueness and it and and it. It is. Um, uh, it's not always easy to yeah. not be like, and especially in a place like Sweden, because coming over to the U.S. thirty years ago, you know what does everybody talk about in Sweden is, and it's true. Like the first time I brought my wife over, she was like, you know, it's just blonde and yeah. blonde people over here. I mean, it's it yeah. is kind of that's the way it is. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so so. Uh, I had a guest on a long time ago from uh I can't remember where he's from, Macevedo, and he was we were talking about um he was from Central America, but but there was, you know, he moved to Edmonton, Canada yeah. and, and became a hockey fan. But th- I'm imagining there's not there's not a lot of hockey going on in Colombia, especially in Bogota. No, no, I'm sorry, but I I, I think it's no one actually. I mean, some maybe maybe some adopted players somewhere in the in the in this world, some who play hockey. But I don't think this is. I mean, no, no. I, I think I think soccer is more, yeah, more that that kind of game in Colombia. Yeah. yeah. So you have to bring the Colombian passion, uh, yes, of from the soccer pitch to uh, to the hockey rink, which I'm sure you do. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I try to be a little bit. Uh, Latino in in hockey, but you know, yeah, it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. So Tronos, uh, I had to, you know, I grew up in Leksand, uh, which is the center of Sweden, center of hockey in the world, the most I think searched team in uh, in elite prospects or something I read somewhere. But um, not everybody believes in that theory. <laughs> But I had to look up where Tronos is because I don't think I've ever been to Tronos. But those who don't know where Tronos is, I pulled it up on on Google Maps. How do you describe Tronos? Growing up there, Oof, that that's a pretty hard one because I always say Tronos is a, just a little. I, I should not say it, but a, li- a little town in, in like nowhere. But it it is actually forty five minutes between Jan Shopping and Lin Shopping. Yeah. There's no so, hockey so, going on in those places. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, you know, it's 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 rather. I mean, I mean, it's it's rather. You you are a Hobi Kutiat fan or yep. you are Lin Shopping who was a fan in Toronto. You know, uh, that's that's uh, the big thing, and so, uh, I and I have been grown up to be a Ferris the Beko fan, so it's been hard for me uh, when I grew up because my my dad has always you know he's from Värmland. And okay. uh, born in Värmland, so yeah, that's that's the thing. So I, I always been a Ferris fan. So always when I grew up and uh, as a kid, I you know I always been like oh, Ferris sucks, and you know and uh, and I always been like uh, yeah, who are they? Kutiat sucks and Lee Shapin sucks. So yeah, no, it, it's always been. But Toronto, it's a very good hockey place. You know, a lot of people loves hockey in Toronto. So it's like Vimmerby and uh, Nibro and Cam. You know, you, you, you know. Hockey is, is, I don't know right now, but the, it is probably the biggest sport in Toronto right now. And they are pretty good. And co- over the couple of years, I think they have developed a good youth academy too. They have bring a lot of good hockey players the last year to Hobi Kutiat and, uh, and Tillin Shopping. So, yeah, I think I think Toronto is okay. Yeah. And not, I- not the best place, but yeah. So that leads kind of into my my main thought of, you know, that I want people to understand whether it's a Swedish listener or, or an international listener about, but it's part of the identity and and how the, what produces good hockey players um, internationally or, or even in Sweden. 
it's yeah. built it's built in those little rinks right yes so yes. we'll talk later on about club in the the team in my heart but like every every player probably started off like i did i happened to be in lexand but you know you started off in in back in my days it was called Bjorn Liga now it's probably called uh um, yeah. Rekrono or hockey school yes exactly which, which is probably going on right now in a lot of those rinks that are bringing in young kids and they bring him you know they get to wear a a, a yellow jersey with the three crowns on it yeah. and and then you get into this funnel of youth hockey with so was it what was it for like for you when you started in Tronos parent coaches I'm assuming at that age group when you started yes okay. yes I I mean I had a parent coaches the whole way up to um uh, to Yishuge on the 20 yeah. I think so I mean that that's the thing I mean you you know in the in the small clubs like Tronos and and you know an organization like that you i mean it's hard i i think in for when i was young like i'm 31 now so in that time i think it was very hard to get coaches outside the i mean from the from the town so right now i think it's it's more coaches young coaches who take st- steps to to be coaches in, in younger ages and yep. uh, and and pre- probably start you are coaching career in uh, U14, U15, U16, but in my time, I think it was not that kind of interest uh, for for young coaches. So we always had you like you know parents coaches who did w- what they you know you know could like yeah. Who who was your favorite coach growing up? Anybody that I mean, I can think back at the guys that I that coached me, and you know they were pivotal in my life really. But yeah. Up, was was there anybody in particular that you're like, yeah, it was this one guy? Not really, actually. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm very, I'm very, I mean, I'm very grateful for the for the time I had with the coaches, but uh, uh, no, I don't think so. I okay. mean, and, this- and that sounds very boring and sounds very uh, ungrateful, but. Yeah, I think that's the case. Well, but but I think that that also is an, another part of Sweden is that there's not this one guy, right? Yeah. So when I was growing up, there was four, yeah. right? And it was it was not. I mean, you, okay, this person had the title of being the head coach, but it really was yeah. a a group effort, and everybody's pulling together as volunteers. They're not getting paid for this, but they have this passion for helping kids and it's just that that it is really a team atmosphere um yeah the other part about like so a town like tronos that place that has an elite team not that plays in shl but they have it their their yeah. men's team that plays in hockeyetan right yeah yes uh, that's right yeah that so hockeyetan third division and they're playing they're not going to play lean shopping in Hovi yet, but the rivalries yeah. are probably what Vimmerby. Yes, it is. Uh, Kvde, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean Vimmerby, Kvde. Uh, not not now is uh, Kalmar and Nibra, but uh, and you know you know always. I mean, I, I think Vimmerby is the most intense game uh, in Toronto. Uh, Mjölby, Mjölby. It's yeah. uh, it has always been a big r- r- rivalry. And so, so yeah, that's that's two two teams, Mjölby and Vimmerby. I think it's the biggest, uh, yeah. yeah, competition. And I think that that's kind of like uh, you know. So what does that mean? Is that you got it? You got an organization, you got a town that really burns uh, around. You know, there has the passion around the club, and then yeah. you have a junior team that either plays, and I think they're playing Division One, right? Yeah, both. I think, uh, yes, uh, Yishu, Yarton, both play in uh, Division One. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you have a gymnasium in that yeah. area that probably is an LIU designation, right? That that's correct. That's yep. correct. 
And and I just think that if you if you put those little thumbtacks on the Swedish maps, yeah, they're all the same. Whether it's it is. In, whether it's in in Vimmerby, Tranås, Hudiksvall, yeah, uh, Lierum, Fallen, Fallen yeah. and all these kind yeah. of places, right? So, but what is it that makes the because you've been to these different places, right? Yeah, yeah. And 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 you know you you were in Fallen um, that I have a connection with, uh, awesome city, but what's the difference between, let's say, Tronos Fallen, versus now you're going into a bigger organization like Huddinge? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have been, I mean, I've been. Coaching in clubs like Tranos, Bekka, Bobby Kutiat, Tingsryd, Alvesta, uh, Nesha, Falun, Huddinge. So, yeah, I mean, I've been coaching in a lot of different organizations and teams. But your your question is, I mean, I think the, the difference is how the youth academy develop hockey players, what kind of, what kind of, status you have like how is your organization in the youth academy how do you de- develop players how do you work with them how do you talk with them how is your practice how do you help them to be better every day because in many in many i mean i mean smaller organization like Toronto, we and stuff you have like youth academy that their players you know practice with your own age older age and maybe two more older age so they they always get a lot of ice time because yeah. when i see tronos they have been developed very good hockey players uh these couple of years but many of these players when you are u16 in the age like uh when you are 15 16 many of them play yishuge in tronos because so what's your, you know what's your opinion on that good bad i mean i mean it's it's hard to say because that's but because what kind of player you are, I mean, some of these kids are like very big. I mean, I mean, they have developed a lot of you know height and weight, and and probably ready to to be like in that that kind of uh, I mean that in that kind of uh, uh, level. But I always say, I mean, if you're good enough to to play in older, I mean, with older players, of course, you should do that because that will develop you as a hockey player. But that I say, but what I want to say is, you don't need to rush anything because yeah. I think you have to have patience with your development because everyone cannot play with two, three years old their guy. But that doesn't mean you can't develop and be a good hockey player. But to so some some teams, some organization like to push up young players to play with older. And some organization like to have you know stay calm, have patient and stuff, and maybe both work. But that's kind of yeah. Well, what's so happened? What's happened? And, and and on paper, every organization in the academy or in in hockey gymnasium is supposed to yeah. have. So the the the, the, the um, resources aren't necessarily equal between Fadia Stad and yeah. and. Let's take Fallen. Were you were, were you working with the academies as well when you were in in Fallen, or did you have uh, was it someone else that was responsible for the um, hockey gymnasium? Uh, yes, yeah, someone else had responsible had had I had 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 responsible for the hockey gymnasium. So I was only like a you know head coach, but for the team. The thing is, yeah, yes, exactly. So, but the the thing is. I think it was the second year or the third year. I don't remember. Then I had, I was like assistant coach in Yishuge and uh, head coach in Yart or or and one year I was head coach in Yishuge and assistant coach. So I had a lot of you know, but when you have both Yart and Yishuge, you could, you know, talk the same same language. How yep. you want to develop? How you want to? What you want the player have to attitude and and stuff like that. So yeah. But the resources go back to the resources like in Fallen versus let's say yeah. where your dad is from, or let's use Fadia Stad as an as an example. Yeah. SHL yeah. team, NIU designation, 
much yeah. coaches. I mean, Fallen's facilities are awesome. I mean, they're probably one of the better yeah. places to be, even if yes. with what they have. But because you're an LIU designation versus NIU, yeah, the, the resources and the economy isn't there at a place like Fallen. Um, yeah, maybe I'm not sure how it is in Huddinge. Maybe in between. Yeah, I mean, uh, that depends what kind of organization you you have. Like, I mean, I don't think every NIU have the best organization. I don't think that. I don't think every NIU is better than every LIU. Because I I think what, I think if you have a good LIU with good instructions, good coaches and and people who wants to, and who loves to develop, then I think you have a very good opportunity to be a better hockey player. Uh, so I don't think you have to be the best player in the world to get to go near you. I don't think that's the reason because if you see in Stockholm, like uh, SDA, Tabby, they don't have near you, but they have a very good, I mean, youth organization. They have good Yachton teams. So I don't think that's the that's the case to be to be successful. I don't think the near you is the the way to be successful. Maybe if you are in like in Luleå, uh, like maybe Frölunda, Hove. I mean, of course, they do good stuff. They have yeah. developed a lot of good hockey players, like Örebro. So, so I don't mean Nio is, is. I mean, I don't mean. I mean, I mean like Nio, Leo. That does. That depends where, what team, what organization. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I just had a conversation too where we, <clears throat> I was talking to Victor Wiedland, who came, who who came out of Frölunda and got accepted into Nio in Frölunda, one of the top yeah. programs. I mean, you could argue is the top program, junior program in the country, but yeah. it's, but it's may in retrospect, I mean, he struggled there. And then the reason why I had him on the podcast, because he played in the, in the null and, and, and now he's playing for Al Vista and is doing really good, but it's, yeah. it, you know, in retrospect or hindsight's 2020 to be able to see, say, maybe he would have been better off to be in the man in a smaller place like yeah fallen or 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 hooding it right Ex exactly yeah and and um you know i had that conversation with urban umark too about he was a we were talking this been a year ago about advising a young player of you know don't just go after the shiny shiny thing right oh i need yeah. to go there because they have the best team well that may not be the best place for you exactly are, are you going to be able to go i had a conversation with a friend of mine who's got a, a a 2005 birth year defenseman here in the u.s and really really good player but is is you know in the middle of you know trying to compete in the north american Ho hockey league and it's tough and is it yeah. better to play in cdc than the null if you're not getting the ice time because the competition's so tough, same thing happens yeah. in Sweden. Yes, you know, it does. Is it better to play for Frölunda or or Yurgården? Yeah, in a small role, or is it better to play in Huddinge in a big? Yeah, role, right. Yeah, I mean that that's a really good. I mean that you say because so many young players now I talk talk about uh, Yishuge. Yeah, uh, we, we we are playing like in the issue regional, uh, and we have issue is national. So I think so many players, young players in issue regional. I I have been coaching a lot of good players who always need to say, "I want to play issue super as uh, so issue national." Yeah, I want to play issue national, and I say, "Okay, of course." But so 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 many teams want. Uh, take you know uh, last junior in Yishuge to bring them to the, the to their own own Yishuge national, but I always say I mean if you don't get the ice time and the trust and the and the and, and that way, why why do you go there to to play in the, in third or fourth line play like nine ten minutes if if even that or play with us and have the lead role. Yeah, and develop, and maybe you will go up to the senior in 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 our division one. But most of the time, you know, the the young players. I mean, oh, they travel, they stay in a the hotel, 
it's very luxury and it's very fun to play against like the, those teams. But in the way, they never think about how do I develop? What what do I get? Yeah, many players always go there because of the, they think it's so big, so good, so luxury, and you know. So that's the good thing you keep up. Yeah. So l- let's let's hone in a little bit here on on your t- your club and your team hood. Yeah. Yeah. Who's who's? So here's my my. Um, I've listened to a lot of podcasts with with Tomas Johansson, Shumme. Yeah, yeah. Do I think, if I'm not mistaken, played in Huddinge? Yes, I think right. so. Yeah, and and um, um, but when I think of Huddinge, I think of it as a really solid development factory for for young hockey players in the Stockholm region. Yeah. That, that doesn't have so when you're looking at the elite teams, the A team or the the adult yeah. uh, pro teams, it's not in the. I don't, I don't know what what level do they play? Hockeyettan or Hockeyettan? Yes. Okay. So they're not in the SHL. They're not in Allsvenskan. So, but yeah. in Stockholm now, you know, yeah, it's not it's an SHL uh, team. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's is Oiko in. Uh, all Svenskan still? Yes, they are. And uh and Gordon too. Jure Gordon and Södertälje, no, they've struggled. They dro- almost all Svenskan. Yeah. They're yeah, Svenskan. exactly. But the three yeah. big teams I would cons- I would say in Stockholm, Jure Gordon, who's always been kind of touted as number one, yeah. Down, more than likely they're gonna find their way back to, to SHL and they should. I, I really think so. But yeah. Oiko, Södertälje, big clubs. But then those are the big clubs. Those are the ones who has the NIU designation. And exactly. then, and then you've got these other teams that yeah. uh, that and, and 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 you know when you're recruiting or whoever's in charge of the hockey gymnasium and they're recruiting players for the hockey gymnasium in Hodinga, you're competing yeah. at J18 and J20 with those guys. Exactly. That's that's the because we are also in EU. Uh Niu Hooding is also Niu. Oh it is a Niu. Okay. Yes, it is. It is actually. Uh, uh so yeah, I mean it's it's a very hard competition here in Stockholm because like you said, we have Aiko, we have Sertelia and Yuri Gordon. Uh, but the the thing is it's even harder now because many players in Stockholm actually leaves to other teams right now yes. because we have a Lex Sand Lulio, Shaleftio, they they bring players when they are U16 players. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, so it is Erebro too. So, yeah, I mean, it is very hard competition, but I think Hudine is a very, very good club to develop because we have a good history. Uh, we have a lot of good people here, coaches. Who, who loves to develop and work hard. So I, I think every day it's it's a good develop to be here in Huddinge uh, as a player because we always want to and you know keep forward, keep forward to be to be better and to to take next step because uh, we ha- we have I mean Huddinge have have been you know a couple of years have been struggling a little bit in the I mean in the, in the senior uh, in the senior teams and the junior teams so but right now I think the the club it's on the right on the right path right now. And but what, uh, I think, but what is yeah. what is success? I mean, what is the goal? Is not necessarily to play in the SHL, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think the goal is to be you know compete to the playoff to Allsvenskan. Yeah, and of course, of course, the club wants to be in Allsvenskan. Of course, yeah. I mean, we, we, I mean. Our goal is always to be to, to the next season to play against Aiko or Jurgen if they're going to be there or Seretelia. So, uh, so I mean that's the way in Huddinge. We always want to grow to be better and always wants to take next step. So the club, of course, wants to be in the hockey as well. That's yeah. the reason we're here to to be to be a win, winner winners but, like yeah. But let me ask you this: Is the how does that goal? compared to the goal of developing players. Because when I say the identity in my mind that Huddinge is a hockey yeah. factory, 
Yeah. He's got kind of the little bit of the of the of the um uh, uh of the identity and the proud what you're proud of as an organization is that we take players and we make them really good players for them to then go somewhere. Yeah. Some will That's stay a, with us, yeah. but yeah. some will go to Kreleftio, some will go yeah. to Lexand, and yeah. we want them to be, I'm a hooding a guy, and hooding is where I got my my wings, so to speak, and 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 develop. Yeah. Uh that's that's a very good thing because I think uh I mean our goal is always to develop good hockey players and and our goal in the, in the autumn is to be, I mean, compete to hockey, I mean, to compete to uh, Al- autumn Allsvenskan. And our goal as a G20 team is to develop players who can take our take the, the step up to our senior team. Yeah, that's our premier goal. But if if we do a good thing too, we we like, I mean, promote players like Tomodo, you Gordon, um, I mean, you know, Lex and or and stuff like that. So we. we we have a big, I mean, we have a big successful the way to who, who, who we want a plan, who we wants to bring up players to our senior team. That's our main goal right now to yeah. develop good hockey players in our e sugar to play in our senior team. That's so our does, main goal. How does it work for you? Because you also have an advantage being in Hockeyatan where you can push your guys up even from J18, but definitely yes. in J20, to go yeah. and practice with with Hoketan, uh, yeah. uh, you know, where if you played in OIK or Södertälje and they play yeah. in Allsvenskan, the leap to Allsvenskan from a J20 yeah. is, is huge. It's I think it's very huge. Uh, so, and, yeah, and it's a disadvantage, I mean, right? If, yeah. If, yeah, I mean, yeah, and 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 the and the funny and the funny fact is that most of the players who play in Yishug National is actually going to hockey at them. Yep. I mean, it, it's it, it's a, it's not many players who take the step to SOL, Allsvenska, and you know, it's it's a little bit minimum players who who actually you know make it to that level. So many players come to hockey at them, but. The thing is, I, I think in Huddinge, our e sugar team has been developed players to hockey at them. I think our e sugar have developed more hockey players to hockey at them than a lot of e sugar national team does. Yeah. So yeah, and but, but yeah, but in in case I mean, and that mean I mean it's it's not only Huddinge, it's uh, Segetorp and and other teams like that. So yeah. Yeah. So in in your let's say now with your group there uh in in Yishuge, Yeah. What's your opinion of so let's say take we just talked about Franz de Groot and 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 uh Malte Hasser again that that tried yeah. their wings in the US, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, or now you got BCHL as an option in Canada for an, as yes. an index, right? Exactly. The, the the relationship that you develop with your players and they're coming to you, they may come to you as a coach more than they do their advisor because yeah. they spend a lot more time with you than they do with their advisor. Exactly. Or, and if they go to their parent, their parent's going to say, I don't know anything about the, uh, about the North American hockey league or the NCDC or the BCHL. Yeah. What do you, what's your opinion? Because here's the thing, you got a guy that is going through hockey gymnasium. They're now, they're graduating. They got another year of juniors eligibility in Sweden for J20. Yeah. So this year is going to be the 04 player, right? So you've got these 04 players that you know they could. Some of them can play Division One. Some may, yes. may, some may. Your best player may get a shot in Allsvenskan, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think that's a big leap. That's a huge, uh, huge to be, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be really honest, that's I think that's a too big leap for for my players. But I think many players we got this year has a good chance to be good hockey at them players this season for our senior team or next season for I mean a lot of good hockey at them teams. 
So yeah, I think I think that leap will be small, but Hockey Svenskan, it's it's a very big step. And I think uh, what our players need to think about is how you how you act, how you how you prepare yourself, how professional you are, how you how you practice, how much you do the extra stuff every every day. And uh, and every guy doesn't have that. I mean, have that in yourself. But my goal and my work is to help them to to develop that so they can get the chance to be a good hockey player. They can be like. So, what's your opinion of 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 them when they're sitting there wondering, should I try to go to hockey or should I try to go play juniors? Because because take that 04 now that is. Yeah. Or, or or no Let, let's use the 05 player yes if they're graduating from high school or a gymnasium they could yeah. stick around for the last year of juniors which yeah would make your team stronger for next year you don't want to lose a senior guy but they're <laughs> looking they got the talent and they could really develop take a malta Hasse, Hasse again smaller in size yeah. you know now he went over there you know realized how tough it was went home went back and then won a championship in the north america yeah, yeah, right uh, yes so so it's a it's a it's a it's definitely an experience that they could do but what's your opinion of that versus like trying i mean i trying to make yeah. it as a, as a fourth liner in the hoqueta i mean i really like the opportunity to go over to play a junior in usa i mean play NOL or ncdc i think I think that's a great opportunity to to play a, a fast, hard physical hockey to develop your other skills than you have to be. Like you know, that's a hockey player, and I think that's a fun ride to do. I mean, I I think now what I have here and uh, heard or I have seen, I, I think I think that's a funny league. I think that's a good league, like NCDC too. So, so I mean, holding a we have been we have we have. We have a lot of players who actually try go over to play junior. I think in a couple of years we have been, you know, a lot of players who try to go over there play hockey. But you know, it's it is pretty hard. It, it, it is, is a hard league. It it's is very tough. tough leagues and tough coaches and good coaches. And we have a little bit different cult culture in uh, in Sweden. Uh, what uh, the uh, USA coaches have, I think. Um, but what, what I mean with that, I think that's a very good opportunity to go over that, go over, have these coaches, have this opportunity to get developed as a hockey player. I think that's a very good step. How do, how but, do I mean? No. How do you how do you prepare that guy? First, I mean, you have, it, to have it, the relationship, it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. You, you you need to have the the relationship and to be honest. But I think. The the only thing I I have to prepare them is to to know they they have to be prepared when they come over. Yeah, you can't uh, go a, a whole summer to do nothing and think that that will work out. No, no, no. I mean, it's it's a very very tough league in a tough coaches and you know you have you have to you know be as your best all the time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's hard to prepare them because. They don't know, and I don't know how the coach will be. I mean, some coaches are very, you know, strict and like like that. So yeah, I I think many are from my Swedish players who've been over there have been a, a wake up call. They're like, wow, this is so much different from the last year. How does it work? Yeah. How, how does it work during your season? Do you get contacted by by advisors? Uh, or do you get contacted by scouts or do you get contacted by the by the general managers from those teams? Do they come and, and watch your games or or how does it work for the for the Swedish player to be noticed over here in the US? I I think actually most of the players who actually want to go over there and try, they t- they contact by themselves. Yep. Uh, the coaches or, or GM and uh, send like videos and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, and the coaches see, oh, okay, it looks interesting. So they, they either they draft him or 
they uh, sign a tender or something and they go over there but that doesn't mean you actually in the in the spot you know in the team so you, you had to more you had to do more than just sign a tender or be drafted you have to actually come over there and and do and do a, do a good job and present yourself self so yeah, yeah. And I, I think back with the conversation with Malta and his brother and you know, his brother gets called into the, and I, I think you coached him as well. And he 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 yes, goes over yes. there and he gets called in the office, and Malta says, "Yeah, he got cut." <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a, I mean, it, it's a wake up call, and and um, you know, you're you're realizing it's a business. You yes, know, it's, it, it's not it's not a vacation. Um, but but um. Uh, do, do, let me ask you too. Do they contact you in terms of what's this guy all about, or do they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some coaches does, but not many, because I think they want to. I mean, some coach I think just okay, just try this guy. I mean, can he, can he play? Can he hang? Yeah, so he's got the size. Has he got the speed? He's got the hands. We'll figure yeah, out if exactly. he's gonna is if this is gonna be. We got plenty of competition. It'll weed out the bad egg. Naturally. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, some some coaches doesn't. I mean, don't care if you are big or small. Some coaches doesn't care if you if you have good stick handle or if you are power. I mean, I think that it depends what kind of coach you are in in the league or what kind of you know like uh, game you play. I mean, yeah. some some team play a little bit more puck puck possession. Some of the team you know like. To work hard and take the puck uh, low and just four checking. I mean that. I always. I think that it depends what what kind of player you look for and what the game you play. Yeah. So, um, all right. Let's round out a little bit here on talk about now. You're you. So, J twenty region in Stockholm. So you're in. Yeah. You're, what, what is the? Um, is it considered J twenty? region east yes it is yeah so the teams that you're playing let me pull it up right quick um you have a a, a broken season here between between now and i guess you just started last week like everybody else right yeah yeah we, we have been uh, playing four games okay so and then you gotta go all the way to christmas and then yeah and, and then yeah what, i know what's no, the breakdown the, the, yeah, this is uh, kind of, I mean, a little bit weird, I think, here in East, because we play now uh, a very fast division, uh, uh, and then we go into a new division, like Yi Shige Yeah, There are two other teams from the the the, the down, you know, like Yi Shige Division 1 coming up, and two teams in R, Serie as our division going down, so you in this division you had to come top top eight top to eight. go forward, okay. yeah okay. top eight. So the the two two bottom teams go down and the two top team from the low division go up, and then we have a new division to Christmas. Uh, no, yeah two, yeah I'm mean, wait I think we have the the new division. Goes to February, I think. Yep. And then we have playoff one, playoff two, playoff three. And then we have like a qualification to Yi uh, Sugar National. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a long ride. I mean, it, it's hard. But in your situation now, when you're, I'm, I've got the, the teams up here. So there's 10 teams in, in J20 Region East. They're yeah. all right there in. You don't have to, other than traffic, you don't have to go very far. It may take you a while yeah. in Stockholm because of traffic, yeah. but <laughs> but it's you you know everybody knows everybody over there, and but but it's all about being top eight, so you don't yeah. get so you don't between now and and Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, and then you reset. The, yeah, and then you reset. So. This league we have right now, this division doesn't matter so much. I mean, I mean, you need to come you know to be top eight, and but the the other division that's the more you know compete. Then you have to be top four to go to the playoffs, and uh, the other 
three or four like coming to the middle and the battle teams, you know, qualification to the down, the series down below. Nixon. Yeah. But as a coach now, that means that, and I'm looking at your roster and you've got, yeah. you have a lot of, you've given a lot of J18 players also the opportunity, right? Yes. Yes, of course. I mean, I, mean, I think, I mean, in this, this year we have a big roster, but I, I think we have been. I mean, our 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 senior team have been been struggle a little bit with injuring and stuff like that. So a lot of good uh, year sugar play has been up and uh, play and practice with our senior team. We have been. I mean, we have been pushing up the good year autumn players who who take the who take next step to our their their development. So I think but- I like it when we push up players. Yeah, isn't that op- isn't that a huge opportunity, especially now when you've got it's competition when you're playing yeah. all these teams and everybody wants to win every game. Yes. But as a coach, you're also looking over the big picture, and you could probably improve your record by one or two wins by yeah. playing only your top guys. But come yeah. come January when it matters, and come February or or, or really March when you go into playoffs. Yeah. You just want to be in the race and you want to be able to have, I've played all my players and developed them as much as we can and groomed them. Yeah. And, you know, isn't that kind of how it works? I mean, of course. I mean, I my goal as a hockey coach, and that that is one thing I always tell play, my players, I want them to take the next step. I want to help them to, to be to be better every day. I mean, of course, I want them in the end of the season. I want us to be so successful we can be. I mean, yeah. I would love to go up to the Yishu National with our team. That 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 would be a dream. But in the end, I think the the thing is, if I can help six players to take the next step, either it's o five o four to take. Hokkietan or Super Elite or I mean, or Yishu National, then I I had I think I have been a good coach and done a, a good job because then I have developed players because in in Hudinger we always want to win we all always want to be successful that's the reason we're here we, we we love to win but in the end I think if we win that is when we develop players to take the next step. If we have four players in hockey at down season after in in our in our senior team, then I then I, I'm happy because then I, I have done my job pretty good. So I'm curious about that too. Um, you know, in the first years of coaching, you were you were you were kind of paying your dues, and yeah, you had your exactly. experience. Yeah, and then you had three years, I believe, in Fallen, and yeah. now. And, but now you've been in one spot for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the good. I mean, I think you have to keep doing your stuff, to keep doing your your work in the same organization to put your print. That I mean, if if you do a job, the 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 organization, uh, Hooding and believes in. That's I think if you can work in the long term, I think that's help a little more. If you you know, switch coaches every year because they they come with new new things, new stuff, and I think do do your your thing in the long term. I think that's the best thing you can do as a hockey organization. But take that back to kind of your the the, the relationship that you're building with with. I, I just think it's great when you can have a guy like Malte who says, "Yes, this one coach." Leonardo, you should have him on the podcast, <laughs> right? But 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 now, when you've been in one spot, this is your fourth season. Th- those relationships that you're building with these these players, yeah, th- those are lifetime. Maybe you're not going to be super close f- with with all twenty five. No, of course, of course, and I like what you say, like because I think in this year, yes, yes, to to keep it short here. I think this year we had a very, after the, this, the, the last season, we had a very small group. I mean, I've never been, we have like eight players after the season who stayed. I mean, yeah. who, who who actually could stay to this season. So we had, we had to, you know, uh, rep, I mean, to 
bring players from other teams in this regional i mean this this league to our so we, we i think we have 13 14 new players this season who comes from other clubs so it's a little bit different of course um from like you know uh, Bika Skoga Södertälje Björklöven uh Tirsa and stuff like that so uh and uh, so yeah it's been a different challenge like the other years because the the last season we had a very i mean the o3 players who not union right now we had a big group two years there we had two more we had two years that we had the same group develop and and that was the other thing because then you, you got a good relationship with them when you work with them two years yeah i mean yeah so that, that that's a little bit different this year is more ex- I mean, a more challenge because we we coach it have to be better to to the group and to bed to uh, you know talk and do other stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's great. All right, so <clears throat> two more questions. Uh, you're 31 now. You yeah. met yourself at 17. Yeah. <laughs> you got you got a little bit more experience now, but but what are the things you didn't know then that you wish now, with the experience that you have, if you sit there with with young Leonardo at seventeen, what would you tell him? What advice do you tell him? I think you always have to believe in yourself as a coach because if you're a leader and a coach, you always have to believe in yourself and and always try to get the the players to be better. But you have always you always need to see the person behind the hockey because I think to be a hockey coach and to be a leader that's two different things and you always have to believe in yourself you do what you do you do what you can and if you do the the best thing you can can do as a hockey coach okay that's that will be enough but if I tell myself when I was you know, like 17 I would say I mean have have patience yeah. because you know stuff will come because if we're 17, you will not be a good hockey coach. I mean, you need to have experience, but you can be a good leader. But it takes years to develop stuff, knowledge. I mean, other stuff, knowledge from other coaches. I've been working with a good good hockey coaches over the years who helped me to, I mean, see stuff, you know, tactical, leadership and everything. So I think... You can't be a good hockey coach and think you are a good hockey coach at 17. It will take a lot of years to even be a K coach. And and you will never be a complete and complete uh, hockey coach because it takes your whole life to be to be a good a good hockey coach, I think. Because I think you always can learn something new. Yeah. I mean awesome. Yeah, and uh, yeah. No, I th- I think you're I think you're spot on and uh I appreciate your willingness not only to come on this podcast, but also your genuine like I, the, the 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 strive to improve, so you can mm. so you can do a better job and and uh, um, uh, I think that's great. All right, uh, we mentioned before we have a partnership with with Target Aid. Um, so uh, James Reason, who's from I think he's coaching Vadimda J eighteen Division two this year, also yeah. a hockey nerd, but but. You know, we we mentioned this with every guest, and you you have your opportunity, to kind of which which team is the team in your heart. But if we go back, kind of closing the loop here about what's that's what it's all about is these smaller teams or organizations uh, to try to highlight, and that's what we're trying to do from a from a uh, help these clubs put them on the map. We'll put them under yeah. our our little. Yeah. Uh, a banner on uh, that we can share, but which team is your team in your heart? You've been a lot of them. Yes. I, I think that's a battle between Falun and the Huddinge because I mean, it has been two. I mean, it has been so many good years in the both organizations and I, I love them very much because it's been a fun ride. It's, I have been coaches with a good, a lot of good people 
I like in both Fallen and Huddinge, who I really appreciate. And um, yeah, I mean, they are they are so good people and so many good. I mean, times we have been together, like some and do, and I mean, won a lot of good games and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's it's a hard rivalry between Fallen and Huddinge, but right now I have to say Huddinge because. Yeah, this is my fourth season, and yeah, I, I just love it here. It's it's yeah. a very good hockey club. Well, we're gonna put it down because we already had fallen on there from Malta. Yeah, well, it's good. Yeah, exactly. We'll share the love a little bit there too. And, yeah, uh, uh, Leonardo, I I appreciate you coming on so much, sharing your story, um, and uh, it's gonna be interesting to to follow. We're gonna follow your team in yeah J twenty region. East, as you battle it out with our other, our other guy, guest from a long time, Leo Girard in Solentuna. I think you're playing against. Yes, him. yeah, yeah. We we play against Solentuna uh, in the first game. I think yes, it was. I think yeah, yeah. yeah. So and and Solentuna, they they played a good hockey this season. I mean, I think they they worked very hard. And I'm I mean, I was very impressed how they how they managed to to be a good unit. Yeah. Uh, well, when we play against them, so uh, I mean, Leo had had done a good job there, and um, yeah, he's a good coach, and I I two respect young, him. Yeah, two young coaches that have gotten a lot of miles on the tires, so to speak, and and, and yeah. good experience, and now you're able to actually take it to another level. So thanks for coming yes. on. We'll stay in touch. And uh, thank you very much. And, and we've got a few of these bank. You know, this probably will be released in December. And we're now yeah. in October. So yeah. <laughs> by the time this gets released, you know, for those who listen, they're going to be like, well, we're just in the start of the seasons. And when you listen to this, it's going to be wrapping up kind of the, the fall season going into to So it's going to be interesting to see where, where you're going to end up. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we have, we have a, been a solid good team and, uh, and our players have been developed a lot since. Yeah. It does. Well, thanks again. And we'll stay in touch. Thank you very much, uh, Jacob. I very appreciate it to be here.